When it comes to illnesses like myalgic encephalomyelitis, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome, a condition that is very similar, if not the same, as long COVID, it's often been wondered whether there might exist one day a pill that could treat the core mechanisms within the illness, perhaps either profoundly improving quality of life or even leading to a cure. Now, very recently, a German startup company called Mitodicure has been founded and that company believes it has identified a compound that could indeed lead to a cure of myalgic encephalomyelitis and closely related conditions. Now I don't want to get your hopes up with that statement. This company has a long way to go. It needs to do the clinical trials and for that it needs a large amount of funding. Nevertheless, I think this is a really exciting uh, avenue. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you all about Mitodicure, its founders, uh, the, the proposed mechanism of action of the drug and why it might help, and what still needs to be done. But first, if you are new to this channel, my name is Patrick Usher, I am an MECFS patient, and this is a place where I aim to talk about simplified versions of the research so that you can be better empowered as a patient with your understanding of these kinds of conditions. And it's also a place where I talk about the various treatment strategies that I have tried in order to improve my condition. If that sounds good to you, please do like and subscribe. So let's first talk a little bit more about this company, Mitodicure. So it's a startup that was founded recently by two people in particular, Klaus Wirth and Harold Passel. Now both of these worked, uh, had long careers at Sanofi, uh, one of the main uh, drug developers. And in the case of Harold, his focus is more on the business side of things while Klaus is more focused on the mechanisms of the drug and the research into MECFS. And not only that, but over the last four or five years, Klaus Wirth has been working very hard on researching MECFS. He first came across a story back uh, maybe six years ago about a very severe MECFS patient, and this really piqued his intellectual curiosity as to what was going on in an illness that could potentially cause such debilitating symptoms. He then contacted uh, Professor Carmen Scheibenbogen at the Charité University Berlin, the MECFS centre there, and from that time those two collaborated on some amazing MECFS papers, really trying to build upon everything that's been done to date and then ask the question, well, how is this all happening? What are all the mechanisms? What, you know, how does A lead to B lead to C? Here's one of them, a, a unifying hypothesis on the pathophysiology of MECFS, recognitions from the findings of beta-2 um, adrenergic autoantibodies. When I first read this research three years ago, it was the most wonderful experience because I actually felt I, I don't have a mysterious condition anymore. This research is the best explanation I found of the core mechanisms within this illness. I am no longer living in the dark. So I think that the, the mind of Klaus Wirth and Carmen Scheibenbogen, is, they're just fantastic in really trying to piece together these conditions. And ultimately, this drug Mitodicure, this compound that he's identified, is based on these hypotheses. Now we'll talk about what exactly the mechanisms are of this uh, potential drug in a moment, but I just want to make the point first that this is real deal stuff. I mean, Mitodicure was recently featured in one of the main German newspapers, the Frankfurter Allgemeine, and here's that article, Die Jagd nach dem Blockbuster, which means the hunt for the blockbuster, i.e. The, the drug that can really break through, um, be a breakthrough for the millions suffering worldwide with MECFS and long COVID. Now, in terms of the mechanisms of this drug, it's very complex, and that's hardly a surprise. I mean, if you're watching this and you're an MECFS patient, think about how awful it feels when you're in a crash, or generally. This illness is complex. But ultimately, the clue is in the name, mitodicure. This is something to do with curing what's going on in the mitochondria at a cellular level. Now, what Wirth's research proposed, and in fact, this was actually found uh, in studies as well, is that 
at a cellular level, there is a problem going on with something called the sodium-potassium pump. Now, the sodium-potassium pump is a little a pump that sits on the cell wall of every single one of the billions and billions of cells that make up your body. Now, the cell, you know, it, it, it's, it has this, it, it's protected by a membrane, uh, which, you know, covers the whole cell. But in order for the cell to be um, happy and healthy, it needs to have a certain amount of potassium and sodium inside the cell. Now, under healthy circumstances, just to simplify greatly, there needs to be a bit more potassium than sodium inside the cell. And what normally achieves this is this little pump that sits on the cell wall and pumps in a certain amount of potassium and sodium and also out a certain amount of potassium and sodium. And what Klaus Wirth's amazing research identified and which was then proven in a study at Charité University Berlin is that this process is becoming impacted, it's slowing down, this uh, pumping is becoming dysfunctional with the result that there begins to be an excessive build-up of sodium inside the cells of ME-CFS patients. And when that happens, the cell starts to become very unhappy, it starts to become dysfunctional. And it actually leads, by again a whole other very complex uh, series of processes, to a build-up of intracellular calcium as well. And when you have this build-up of intracellular sodium and intracellular calcium, the big picture is the cell becomes dysfunctional, the muscles become very weak, they cannot generate energy appropriately, they cannot build up, rebuild up the mitochondrial reservoir uh, for, for the energy needed for exercise. I mean, the, the, under normal healthy circumstances, the activity of the sodium-potassium pump when someone's, for example, going for a brisk walk or for a run, it will increase at least 20 times. And so in ME-CFS, when you have this dysfunction of the pump, this, this, this activity increase uh, is not able to happen as you would need when you want to go and take exercise. The result is the uh, mitochondria give up and you crash. If you want to get a greater sense of where this is coming from, I thoroughly recommend watching Klaus Wirth's presentation at the 2023 Charité University um, Conference on ME-CFS in Berlin. The link to that will be down below and his video was the last presentation, so you go to the bottom and you will find it. So what about mitoticure? Where does that fit in? Well, what this compound would do, and we don't know the name of this compound, it does not yet exist in drug form. Um, you know, it needs to be turned into a tablet. But what it would do uh, is that it, it would normalize this dysfunction of the sodium potassium pump and thereby allowing again to have a normal amount of sodium inside the cell, a normal amount of calcium inside the cell, thereby at a mitochondrial level healing the function, allowing there to be much more energy available therefore in the muscles and Basically, the big picture idea is, this is the claim, and I, and I really want you to reflect on this because it shows how potentially powerful this could be. If someone is taking mitodicure, the idea is, the claim is, post-exertional malaise becomes impossible. So think about that. You, it would not be physiologically possible to crash. Now, what does that mean? There is a view out there for example, it's been expressed by Professor Ron Davis from Stanford that the key to improvement is not to experience post-exertional malaise. Because when you are in a crash, when you experience PEM, all of the mechanisms in the illness are heightened, uh, they all become exacerbated, and when that's happening, it's impossible to heal. On the flip side, if you never experience PEM, then your body is potentially able to heal. So if you could take a tablet, and it would just be a simple tablet, that makes it impossible to experience post-exertional malaise, then the likelihood that the body can do the rest of the job, that you can just over time spiral upwards towards health, well, it may not be guaranteed, but it becomes a lot more likely. And that's why this drug could actually represent a cure, at least for a significant number of patients. No crash equals healing. So where are we at with the development of this drug? Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, don't get your hopes up. Um, this drug still needs to find investors, and they are looking 
perhaps for a consortium of wealthy individuals who might wish to take this on as an investment, perhaps wealthy individuals with connections to MECFS, or indeed with uh, they, they are looking for potential government funding as well. But to my knowledge, unfortunately, they haven't found that funding yet. But even if they get the funding they need, the way that medical development, drug development works, it will still take a long time in order to actually get this drug out there. It's always going to be the case that drugs take a long time to develop, especially if it is for a specific indication. But it's so important that that process actually happens. But if you do happen you know, to know any wealthy billionaires who might like to fund this drug and solve MECFS and long COVID, you should definitely contact Mitotic Cure and bring that to their attention, just on the off chance. Now, what do I think of Mitotic Cure personally? Well, I think that this is something that really does have to happen. Uh, I believe that the research of Wirth and Scheibenbogen captures uh, most accurately what's going on in MECFS better than competing research groups. And so my own hunch is that this is the kind of pill that could make an enormous difference uh, to the lives of millions of people. So I really hope that it's going to happen. I also think it's really important that we have an MECFS drug for another reason, and that is to do with the perception of the illness. At the moment, even though research has shown countless abnormalities in the body uh, of MECFS patients, we are still left with this uh, situation of widespread neglect of the uh, often very ill. If you have a tablet which is able to correct specific identified pathophysiological mechanisms in the illness and which research and clinical experience shows leads to dramatic improvement in patients, then the psychosomatization narrative has to get put in the wastebasket because there is nothing a doctor loves more than giving a pill to someone and them saying that they feel better. The pill proves the principle. That's just how modern conventional medicine works and thinks. So this is why this drug is not just a potential blockbuster in terms of relieving human suffering, but it's a potential blockbuster in terms of changing the perception of the illness uh, in the medical profession and at a societal governmental level. Now, while I have high hopes for this pill, I have to admit that sometimes I get a sinking feeling about it. Often the universe just isn't massively fair, and when such a gift, potential gift like this comes along, it has a tendency to be blind to it. I think one of the problems is, is that um, Klaus Wirth's research is quite complex and it uh, you know, goes into all the many interlinking vicious cycles in the illness. And it can actually be hard for people, even very intelligent doctors, to grasp you know, uh, how all these mechanisms interrelate. And, and, at, and, and, and at first glance, it seems really complicated, his research, but actually it's all just one dysfunction. So I think partly, um, this is a problem of competing hypotheses about MECFS and actually trying to make the case, make the, the convincing case that this is the most important one. And then there's just a lack of funding towards MECFS, uh, for MECFS in general, from governments and private bodies um, that make it much harder to get this funded. If it were a, for a different illness, I'd imagine that the many millions that would be required to fund such a trial would be, uh, would be more easily obtained. So sometimes I feel a certain yeah, sense that it, maybe it will never get anywhere, and that makes me quite sad. And sometimes I wonder if we as a patient community, with the right, uh, with the right uh, uh, marketing or the right uh, kind of uh, advocacy campaign, perhaps we could fund the trial, but then it's probably be, from the best of my knowledge, so much money that maybe that's not feasible either. But I really hope that this happens. I think about what Klaus Wirth has done. You know, he's quit his job at Sanofi. He's worked in drug development for decades. He came across MECFS with no previous knowledge and he really wanted to get to grips with it. And in many ways, the, the, the illness kind of overlaps with his previous interests. And so, this vision, of, this vision of a man who decided to, to put all of his efforts into helping 
uh, unravel this devastatingly debilitating disease as it can be for many people and say I'm going to work this out and I'm going to find a simple tablet that could change lives. That deserves huge commendation and I really really hope that mitodicure does come to pass and that a simple tablet could one day ease the suffering of millions. And I think it's also interesting as a final point because Oftentimes, within the MECFS YouTube sphere, particularly people who promote more alternative approaches like brain training, which I've nothing against and I practice it myself, but they often say, you know, will there ever be a tablet? No, there won't. There'll never be a conventional cure for MECFS. You've got to retrain the brain and pace and work your way out of it yourself. It works for some people, but not for everyone. And the fact of the matter is, of course there could be a tablet one day. If you actually know what's happening, if you actually know the nitty-gritty of the specific mechanisms, of course you can have a tablet. You know, of course you can have a tablet. It's not just repurposed, but it's actually targeting what's going on. Yes, you could. And therefore, yes, you could potentially have a cure. And for my money, this is the most likely option for that. So I hope that this will come to pass. Anyway, leave your thoughts down below about my Toddy Cure. What do you think? Do you know of any... Uh, potentially uh, very wealthy investors who might have an interest in MECFS who could uh, fund this, you know. Um, yeah, just leave your thoughts down below and I look forward to engaging with you.